It's a blessing to be welcome on a projected NBA draft pick in his upcoming 2021 NBA draft class. He just became the first member of Pitt to be selected to the all ACC first team. And that's Justin Champagny. How are you doing, man? I'm good. How are you doing, boss? Pretty good, man. Well, I know this is a huge part in your life right now. Everyone's dream is obviously to go through the NBA draft process and eventually play in the NBA. And you're currently in that right now. Take us how you're feeling right now. I'm excited, you know, just to, just to be able to go through this journey and uh, say that I got the chance to do this. You know, I feel like I worked hard to get in the position and I, I'm going to take full advantage of it. Now, what's just like sitting back? Like I said, this is a dream I know everyone that touches the basketball and pursues it wants to eventually achieve. So for you to know that you're actually in this mix now, you actually are months or days or weeks away from actually getting your name potentially called. Like what's going through your mind in that sense? Uh, just work, you know, just staying humble and continuing to do what I've been doing which is staying in the gym and just, just upgrading my game to to become more of a, a a threat on the NBA level, you know, right away and trying to help a team right away. Absolutely. We're going to get through this whole process in college and all a little bit, but I want to go through your story to get to this point. So if we had all the way back, you're originally from Brooklyn, New York. What was it like growing up out there? Oh, it was rough, you know. Everything everybody hears about Brooklyn is, for the most part, true. You know, it's a concrete jungle, really. And... uh I just, I'm just blessed to have my brother along the way with me. You know, we kind of bounced off each other and just worked together. And uh, it's been some ups and downs, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I would never change it for anything. I love it, and I love where I come from. That's what we have to really get into because, as we know, the Champagne's name is becoming really popular right now amongst college world, and especially now the NBA with you and your brother Julian. So take us to that, like growing up with someone that's an elite player as well, a guy that's able to – potentially playing the NBA in the near future as well. Like, just what was it like just growing up with him? It was great. You know, I always had somebody to go to. I always had a friend, the best friend right next to me, 24-7, really. And uh, uh, on the court-wise, it was just always competition, you know, and I felt like that kind of paved the way for both of us, uh, becoming the players we are today, just really battling each other, you know, going to, going to war in the parks, you know, the gyms, and, and after whoever wins, we just start to fight, really. So uh, just, just being able to do all that and, and thug it out together it helped us a lot. I know brothers have always been kind of split. Some like to team up together a lot. Obviously, I just went separate ways in college, and we'll discuss that later on. But growing up on the high school level, you guys played together. But on the parks, like, did you guys always stay on the same team? Did you guys like, did you guys like going up against each other? Like, how that work in terms of you two playing together at the parks? Oh, uh, when uh, we play against other people, we love to play together. Mm -hmm. We always team up and play against everybody else. But when it was just one on one, we would just go at each other's necks every day. So uh, that's pretty much it. So when you guys do play one-on-one, -on -one, I believe you are the older one by a couple minutes there, but how have you guys learned to play those games? Like, just typically end in fights? Have you guys got pretty good just being able to play one-on-one -on -one without fights, or how does that work with you two? When we first started playing, it would always end in a fight. The game probably would never end it. It would just, like, it would be tie game or someone about to get pointed and we would just start fighting. But uh, as time grew, like, got on, and we just, we just learned how to finish the games, like, control our emotions and just better each other. So that's how it kind of played out, really, as we got older. So if you guys are going to play a series to five, and each game is going to 11 points, who's going to win that series? For me. For me, there's no question. that Julie's going to get two games, maybe two, if I let him get the, the second one. But me, I'm going to win that. Now, these guys are unique because, obviously, there might be some characteristics you guys kind of share and feature-wise and how you guys look, but you guys are polar opposite character-wise. People that watch you guys, clearly Julian's a elite scorer. He's one of the most elite scorers in the country He's last year, only as a sophomore. He's more of a quiet demeanor. He has a chance and it kind of emotions here and there, but you're someone that's always trying to pump up a crowd. You play with passion that drives you. So what's it been like balancing those two personalities at home? Uh, it's been, it's kind of weird sometimes, you know, like he's really passive aggressive. Like, you don't really, he's kind of laid back, you know, he don't really get upset about certain things. He just lets it like go through his day without, you know, saying, showing any emotion. As me, I like to, I like to voice my opinion. Like, as you can see on the court, I let everybody know when I'm killing, when I'm doing my thing. I let it be known. And it, it's, it's been cool to see how we both kind of grew, like grew up and grew apart kind of. Not grew apart, but like different personality-wise. It's been cool to see that. And like, we both pick each other's brain. Like, I, I asked him, like, how can I like, I'm saying, change my demeanor a little bit, trying to come a little calmer. He asked me, how can I bring that aggression out of him? So it's kind of like uh, we feed off each other kind of thing when it comes to that stuff. For you guys, you guys come from a family that doesn't have basketball run the bloodline, soccer on your dad's side. And that's something that clearly just don't athletic. He won a championship, went to the appearance with St. John's. Obviously, he's then a head coach out there too. But 
Just take us through having him in your life. Someone that's gone through the life of athlete, gone through the college lifestyle, recruiting. Like, how big has that been for you guys? Oh, it's been it's been huge, actually. You know, uh, my dad got from the soccer early, a young young age, and uh, soccer was really my first love. Not really so much Julian; he only like the heat that much. But uh, uh, just just being out there on the field and, and learning new things and new sports, and it kind of helped our footwork a lot. You know, being able to move and like agility wise on the court and, and on the field. So. Just having him around and having him having him drop those gems of, of him being in college, him going to a national championship, it, it helps a lot. You know, it's not, not the same sport, but it still it still means a lot, and it kind of paved the way for both of us as well. I also read that there was once a time that you guys were playing one on one or king of the court or something, and he dunked on Julian. I think when he was six years old or something. I know that these have always probably played scrimmages with him too, king of the court games. So, what were those games like going against Dad? Oh, they were tough. You know, uh, my dad actually was a multi-sport athlete. He didn't play in college, but he was really good at basketball in high school. Um, very athletic. It's always hard playing against him, always competitive. You know, every, it's every kid's dream to beat their father in the sport that they play, you know what I'm saying? So we knew we couldn't get him in soccer, so basketball was the kind of thing that we knew we wanted to get him in. But it was cool. It was, it was dope, really, just having somebody there that could just really relate to us in that specific moment. Like, So, I mean, I love my dad. I miss him, and I can't wait to get back up with him. At what point did you start pursuing basketball? Like, when was that the sport you decided to say, okay, I want basketball. This is truly my true love now. Uh, it was after eighth grade. Um, I had to uh, choose between basketball and baseball, actually. I can't give up soccer when I went into my seventh grade year. Like, it, I just got too tall. Like, they tried to put me in a goal, and I didn't want to play that position no more. So I kind of gave up on it. But uh, eighth grade, I just started to play, take basketball seriously and, and really take it to the next level. Was the ball first put in your hands or Julian's first? Like, which one of you guys first started playing this game? It would same, be there at the same time. Moms and pops dropped the soccer ball and then the basketball in our hands at the same time. So we kind of did everything together, really. I also know that you guys eventually went through middle school and you guys started in sixth grade and you guys didn't make the team when you guys were 11 years old. And I know that's kind of fueled you guys to this point, too. So walk us through that day and just how much that really impacts you guys going forward. Uh, that day was the first day I realized about politics and basketball. Uh, I didn't make it. We didn't make it because the, the coach's son made the team over us. That was the last spot he took it. And uh, it kind of broke my heart. Like I cried after that. And after that day forward, I said, I never want to feel this way again. So from that day forward, I always said, I'm going to take this game serious and I'm going to make sure that I'm the best player on the court at all times. And the same thing we went for Julian. He did the same thing. We worked at it, seventh grade year, became the best players on the team and just took off from there. You guys have always not necessarily had it easy when you talk about rankings and you talk about all the political stuff that comes with really the recruiting process because you guys go through, obviously, play your freshman year of high school and you guys have a dominant senior campaign, even pretty much junior upperclassmen dominant seasons, but you guys both weren't highly ranked players. You were still a three-star 250, but they're now going to be drafted after only a sophomore year, so clearly those rankings weren't accurate, but how has that kind of impacted you? Like, how have you handled not always being counted and kind of being doubted by your career so far? I love it, actually. I love being down there. I love people saying I can't do something. It gives me the motivation to go out there and really, like, prove everybody wrong. I love pressure. I love when the odds are stacked against me. I feel like my chances are better when the odds are stacked against me. And uh, I don't really pay too much into to, to rankings and this and that. and all about to mock drafts and stuff like that. I just want to go out there and work. Like, I know that I can control what I can control, which is how hard I work. And I go out there every day and work as long as I can. So... As we mentioned, you are from Brooklyn, New York, and New York as a whole is known as probably the mecca of basketball, if not one of the key points of producing talent historically today, and it's going to probably continue to do that. But even Brooklyn alone, like Brooklyn has produced more stars than a lot of states can even claim. So what was it like growing up out there in the basketball landscape? Uh, it's kind of rough. You know, you got to prove yourself. You know, like nothing's given easy. Uh, you got to go out there every day, whether it's in the park, you know, uh, a little park tournament, a, a pickup game in the park, a uh, Dykeman, uh, everything. Like, you got to go out there and just put your best foot forward because your first impression will be your last, yeah, especially in New York. Like I said, it's a concrete jungle, especially on them courts. You know, you got to you gotta give it your all. So it kind of paved the way and it helps us get that uh, killer mentality in a sense. And that's what I want to lock in on because so many guys develop a killer mentality in different aspects, but – when you're growing up in a New York, a Philadelphia area, like this certain areas of the country that does have that dog mentality, but New York specifically, 
what does that kind of look like? Like, how did you develop that? And when you step on a court now at Pitt and whichever team you're playing for next year, like, what is that killer mentality and how is that kind of established in you? My, my killer mentality is just whoever's in front of you, like, you got to get that work. Simple as that. You know, like, I, I always say to myself, you work just as hard as the next person to get to where you are now. So, like, I'm not going to let nobody take no food off of my plate. So every time I step on that court, I look at it as, as as this is my plate and there's always somebody else on the other team trying to stop me or, or do better than me. So it's just a matter of going out there and proving that nobody can really stop. You know what I'm saying? That's my killer mentality. And I, I, I think it's going to help me in the long run, you know? Not a lot of guys have that mentality where, like, it's do or die in the court. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I play every game, like, it's going to be my last. So I think it's going to be to my advantage and I can't wait to put it on show for everybody to see. This might be going back a little, quite a bit for you, but when was the first time you played a real park game? Like that first real true game, like, and you probably know what I'm talking about, like that first game going against the big guys. What was that day like and just take us to that first game for you? It was probably around like fifth grade. That's when I started to grow a little bit. Uh, I played uh, against a grown men, and they knocked me around the whole, the whole game. But uh, that was the first time I realized like, okay, like this, this is it's not going to be easy. And if this is what I want to do, I gotta be, I gotta develop that tough mentality. So that kind of that that day, from that day forward, I told myself every time I step on this court, like I'm a, I'm gonna out tough everybody. You know what I'm saying? And, and that group of guys, I still know them to this day, and, and they really helped me out a lot. You know what I'm saying in this process. Who was your favorite guy to go up against? Was there like one guy specific that you always love matching up against out there? Really, really. Um, no, I don't really have no one that I really, like, look forward to playing against. Uh, Christ the King, actually, when we played in, when we played in high school. Park games, I didn't really have no, like, person I really wanted to see. But mm-hmm. high school definitely was Christ the King because they, they had the name, you know. So that was one of the teams I loved playing against. And now growing up in that New York area, like, guys that were playing around now, some of the stars, one guy was defensive player of the year in your conference and Jose Alvarado. He's from out there. Like, you guys have a lot of – the New York guys, obviously Jelly Fam guys came out there too, like around your time. So wh- who were some guys, if there were any, that you kind of got close to from growing up out there in that area? Uh, I'm really the closest person to me is my brother, really. Mm-hmm. But um, I would say I know Kofi. That's my guy. Yeah, I go to Illinois. But uh, Rams, he was in Juco. He probably went to Oregon State. Um, that's That's – I was really the main – oh, Femi Cali, he goes to play with me. That's my guess, my brother right there. But uh, those are my guys, you know what I'm saying? I, I wish everybody the best of luck, and I, and I, and I want to see them at the same level as me. And I feel like this this past, this next come, upcoming year, I feel like uh, Rams and, Co- and, Rams and uh, Femi are going to do it. They're going to make it to the league this year. So it's going to be lit. It's going to be tough. When you look at all those park games you played growing up, is there one game that kind of stands out the most to you? Like, is there one that you always would never forget? Um, we played a game in Dean Street, um, me and my brother, and it was the first time that we ever got an article written on this. And uh, I never that was that was the first game where I realized like okay, like my name is is starting to become one of the better names in New York City. So I gotta take it take it up a notch from here. At the same time, I know a lot of guys say that they kind of even prefer playing park games now more than they do more regulated games, rather be at high school or college level. Is that the same for you? Like, do you would you prefer playing park games or do you like the college and more organized games better? Uh I like the college games better, you know. I, I feel like I like them better because I have the advantage. Because I played so many park games in my life that I bring that same mentality to the regular games and nobody else really does. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're from New York, like you said, Jose Alvarado, he brings that mentality every day, every game. So I feel like I like the regular games because I got the upper edge, the upper hand. The last thing about park games, if you could go put together five guys you want to go out there and play a park game right now, who's the five guys that was around your time, anyone that was playing high school ball when you were from New York that you won that team? Easy. Uh, point guard, Femi Kelly. Um, shooting guard, Kadari Richmond. Mm-hmm. Small forward, Julian, my brother. Power forward, I can play the power forward. And... Uh, the big man, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Kofi. Facts. I know nobody gonna beat that team right there. Absolutely. Let's head into the high school career because you guys obviously go out there and you guys end up having a crazy legacy. You guys end up leaving out there. But that freshman year, you weren't on varsity yet. Now the one you two were. 
So take us to that playing on the freshman team as a freshman. What was that first year like? Uh, I expected to play on the freshman team my first year. You know, that's when I was kind of just getting acclimated to, to high school and, and being in those kind of lights because I was at the time blocking was a big high school. You know, and uh, I, I thought it was it was it was the best thing for me. Like my my coach Fergie, she taught me a lot of stuff that year. He taught me to be humble. He taught me how to be a killer, really. And he helped me get to that next level as well. You know, we um, won a championship that year. And he didn't even play me in a championship game. And to this day, we always argue about it, like, why he didn't play me. He was like, to teach you a lesson. I'm saying that you you got to be humble and and just continue to work because sometimes it's not always going to go your way, especially when you get to that next level. So I uh, appreciate everything he's done for me. And, and my coach, Steve, the same guy on that, on that, on that coaching staff. Those are my, my, my family to this day. So they, they helped me out a lot. So what would went to choosing Bishop Laughlin? Like, why was that the school you guys chose? Because there's a lot of great schools in the New York area you could have went to. Why was that the school you wanted to attend? It's crazy. I had saw um I had saw them on the news. I always saw Lock on the news. Mm -hmm. I always saw Keith in the news. And I was just like, yo, that's the school I want to go to. Like they look like they got a lot of basketball hype. And uh, I, I want to go there. I want to be the next one to come out of there. So my dad. He busted his tail to make that happen. My mom and my daddy worked their hardest to get me in there, and, and it worked out for the best. So if I would have told you heading to freshman season that you're going to leave as a guy that can choose from so many schools, from Cincinnati to Rutgers, Seton Hall, Pitt, like you could have chose from any of those schools and eventually you're going to become an NBA prospect. Could you have seen that in your future at that point in time? I always had the utmost confidence in myself. I actually, when I was younger, I thought I was going to go to Michigan State. I thought I was going to get all the, the top offers because I just believed in, in my skill and my game. But uh, when it all set, when it was all played out and said done, like I, those were the offers I was left with, I was actually so happy. I was so happy because I love being an underdog. You no, know, everybody counts out as an underdog. So I feel like me going to Pitt and me having those schools on my list was the best thing for me. As for Julian, obviously you're not him exactly, but what was his mentality? Do you think he was believing he's going to become this good too, or was his a little bit different than yours? Drew, he's very quiet. So, like, a lot of people didn't know what his mentality really was because he didn't really speak that much. But same thing. He he thought he was the best player ever. Like, we always said we had the best players to walk through Lachlan, all, all, always. And uh, he just has that confidence in him, too. He just – he shows it in a different way. Nobody really sees it. He don't really talk about it. He don't really speak about it. He, but when he gets on that court, he's a killer. He's a cold-blooded killer. I promise you that. You look at the list of guys you were able to play alongside us being in the same program as throughout your time there. Keith Williams, obviously a great player for Cincinnati. Marquise, obviously heading out to Kansas State now. You have Richie, who's at UConn. You got Adrian, who's just finished a great career out there in Michigan. Like, you have so much talent within that locker room you're going against. How was it? Like, what was it like just being around that much talent throughout your high school career? Oh, it was great. It was, uh, was eye-opening, you know, seeing guys ahead of you and, like, like no one like that. Like these guys, like certain some of these guys, is better than me right now, and and it just gives you a goal to work at. Like you're trying to beat the next guy. Like I, I got to get better than to be better than Keith, to be better than Marquise, to be better than. Them. And, and they they push me every day. Keith pushed me every day in in, in locker room. He used to dunk on me in practice every day. You know what I'm saying? Like to tell me like, yeah, Yo, you gotta you gotta be better. And eventually, like it kicked in, and my my junior year and senior year, I put it into play. And, and he by the time he was gone, and me and my brother took over. So. Yeah, I, I appreciate those guys for, for being there, helping me. And everybody in that locker room that year, down to Jordan Thomas, Ty, uh, Tyrese was in there. Those are my guys. That sophomore season wasn't the best statistically for you, but all those guys we just talked about, and obviously Julian's there with you too, but like all those guys were on the same team your sophomore season. So what was that year like? Man, we we, we should have won. Mm -hmm. We, we should have won, but uh, it didn't play out that way. Uh, it was it was it was cool though, you know, having a locker room filled with that much talent. He's like, you don't really see that in a lot in high school, especially high school in New York. That much talent in one locker room. I think a lot of players on that team went D one, a lot of them, uh, and a lot of them had potential to go D one. So it it was it was dope, you know, just being in there and being with a bunch of guys who really could hoop, you know, what I'm saying, and love to play the game. When you fast forward now and you look at your college career so far. Whenever you do match up against a guy that you either played with throughout high school, you played on A or you became close with. What are those games like? Oh, they're fun. It's fun because, like, you dream of moments like this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we played against uh, Syracuse. I grew up with Kadari my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's fun to play against him. Because, like, we always talked about we're going to be in these positions to play against each other, play with each other at the highest level. You know what I'm saying? 
it's just it's just it's just like a dream come true like i'm saying within itself speaking on kadari a little bit he's someone that i'm super high i think he will be an nba prospect if it's not for this upcoming year it'll be in maybe two years after his junior year but he also was at syracuse great first season headed out to scene hall now what are they going to be getting in kadari a dog he don't really speak too much he's not going He's not going to say speak his business, but mm-hmm. he coming in there to kill. You know what I'm saying? I know his mentality is he's trying to he's trying to make it happen and go pro. So and I feel like he could do it. You know what I'm saying? I think he got the intangibles. He's a great player and a great person. So seeing all about to get a, a real dog. A lot of the guys that you were with on your sophomore year obviously moved on to college at that point. And this became really your team now. You break out and you become a 17 point per game type of guy, 12 type of guy rebound. Like what led to that breakout though? Like was that something you're expecting? Think you could have done better, like, but ultimately, just what led to that breakout season your junior year? Uh, I, I think it all led to me just telling myself, like, I want to I want to become a pro this year, like, this is my year. I always told myself I want to do two years in college and, and make my dreams come true. And it just clicked, you know, having the guys around me and uh, everything I've been through my sophomore year kind of like propelled me to be the person I am and the player I am today. I expected, I expected myself to do that, you know what I'm saying? If, if I can go back, I would probably go do some more, uh, but. Uh, it was just a matter of time for me, just a matter of just being confident in my game and, and trusting the coaching staff and doing what they, they put in place for me. The senior year was by far your best year. You guys go 23-4 and four as a team, led by you and Julian. You get second team all USA in New York. You get first team all state for your conference. What was that senior year like for you? Oh, it was fun. It was a fun ride. Like, I just – it wasn't – it like, the winning part was so good. Like, it was fun. But, like, at the end of the day, it was more for me, like, just being around my teammates for that last year. Like, I knew that. I was about to go to you know, saying, a different state for school and I'd be around so many of my guys. And uh, it was just more just taking in the moments, you know what I'm saying? Going on the road trips with them, going to, to Florida, going to Delaware, just having fun in the hotels with them. And just every day in school, just being around them, making jokes, you know what I'm saying? It, it was just, it was kind of like a joy ride that last year, just to have fun and, and, and focusing at the same time, but just, just really taking it all in. You did something unique, too, because we just talked about one school and one school alone for an entire four years. And in today's world, a lot of guys like to transfer around, rather be out of state to a big prep school, just switching schools within state. Like, not too many guys that are elite stay at one school for four years. So what led to that for you? Like, why did you want to stay loyal to one high school all four years? I'm just a loyal kind of kid. I mean, Coach uh, Coach Ed, he, he took me as a freshman. You know what I'm saying? He... He trusted me my sophomore year to be on that team, to start on that team when 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 uh, Richie got hurt and stuff like that. And I just I'm not I'm not I can't leave I couldn't leave my dry I couldn't do that team. Uh, that's my guy. That's my family to this day. Uh, I just I just love them. You know what I'm saying? I love the coaching staff. I love everybody over there. Coach uh, Coach Ed, Coach Gerard, everybody over there. And uh, I wanted to make it happen with them. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be nowhere else but with them. Those are my guys, and I love them. You look at your entire four-year career there. What's the biggest memory, your favorite memory you had throughout those four years there? Biggest, best memory. Okay. I would say we played, uh, we lost. We lost to St. Ray's at St. Ray's, but it had to be the most packed game I've ever played in. That game and the Christ the King game, we won in the in the semifinals and keep it three free throws. Packed, packed, packed. I love that game. Those are moments that I'm always going to remember. They were lit. They were like probably the latest moments of my life. So, okay, I, 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 they were just it like nothing in my eyes can like top that right now in this moment. Absolutely. Well, let's head into this recruiting process because I know a lot of people might look at this and be a little surprised because you and your brother have been dominant now throughout your entire career. You guys have always been great. You guys ultimately, as we know, go separate ways. You go St. John's, you go to Pitt. So take us through this whole process. Like, were you guys ever talking about teaming up? Was that ever something you seriously looked at? You just want to split ways? Like, Walk us through this whole process and how you guys ended up at different places. We um we wanted to team up together, you know, but uh, Julian wanted to do a post grad year. I didn't really want to do it, and I just said like, "Yo, like whatever you choose to do, like I'm going to support you. Like I'm your brother, I'm your twin. Like whatever you choose to do, I'm right here by your side." And I, I he said the same too. So I told him like, "Yo, I'm going to go to Pitt," and, and I committed. And St. John's came around and offered Julian, and they offered him 20 minutes a game as a freshman. So kind of like a family thing. My dad went there, they offered him 20 minutes a game. He couldn't really pass it up. You know, he took the opportunity and he made the best of it. That's all I can ask for. As long as he was good in his shoes and where he was at, that's all that made me happy. 
And that'd be hard on him too, because once again, I was kind of surprised to see how that happened for you. Still had a lot of high offers, but even the ranking aspect, going back to that, like you guys both were just great players and someone that has typically a lot of a spotlight in New York. How was that going now? Like, how did he handle that going through his whole four years? And how did you kind of help him through that? And he didn't have too many offers as he just accomplished what he did throughout high school. Yeah, we, we, we always talked like, yo, we, we know that we're better than half these kids that are ranked. We know that we're better than half these kids that have all these offers. And we know what we do best and what we bring to the table. You know, it's, it's, we, we, we focused on not watching what, what the next person has. Because if you watch what the next person has, you lose what you get. You know what I'm saying? So we stayed humble. You know, we took all the offers that we got, you know what I'm saying? And we made work from there. You know, we just focused on the, on ourselves and, and pushed and worked, really. Let's say things did work out and you guys all just did team up together in college. How special would that duo have been? National championship. Mm-hmm. I, I personally believe, I really believe that. I believe that if Julian came to Pittsburgh, I feel like we would have won the ACC and made a tournament run. If I went to St. John's, it's the same thing. They would have been one of the Big East. Made a tournament. I feel like us in the same team is, is, un, is unstoppable because it's like you feed up each other's energy. So if I'm having a bad game, he's going to pick it up and I'm going to pick it up right with him. You know what I'm saying? So that would have been a really special thing to be like to happen. But now everything happens for a reason, I believe in. So as you said, his offer came in super late. You already were committed, but did you at all kind of think about, well, what if I could possibly go to St. John's too? Because that offer wasn't on the table for you back before you committed to Pitt. Did you ever consider possibly going back and teaming up with them after you did commit to Pitt? It was a thought, but, like, as soon as I went on my visit to Pittsburgh, I just knew, like, damn, mm-hmm. and I, this is where I want to go. This is where I want to be, spend however many years I got to spend here. I, I, I want to be here. You know, I believe in Coach Cape, JC, T.O., Coach Brian, everybody on the coach staff, Jay Rich, down to the managers. I loved everybody, you know. So I just knew that was my home from the jump. In Blue Collar City, I come from New York. I'm, I'm used to the Blue Collar work, so. I loved it, and I would, I would never change it for anything in my life. When you do turn that TV and you see what he's doing out there, dropping 20 points a game, just what's going through your mind to get to watch him do his thing? Um, I broke a couple of TVs on, on our way trips. I threw some different <laughs> TVs watching him play. You know, he he had some games where he just started killing out the, the first half. And yeah, I broke a lamp, I think, on our way trip. Just watching him do like do his thing just makes me excited. It makes me feel like I did something. You know what I'm saying? And just a great feeling watching your twin brother just just killing that level with everybody down to him as well. So it's a great feeling. He is also going through this process. So if it eventually comes to the time that you guys are both in the NBA on separate teams, you guys do play against each other, what would that game be? You guys think it's going to trash talk each other at all? Or would you just be straight up just trying to guard each other? Like, how would a game versus you two be? Whatever it, would, whatever it may be, we're going to trash talk each other, <laughs> even if we're on the same team. But uh, I, I would love to do that. I would love to face up against him, you know, again, and it's possibly playing the same team as him. I would love it, you know what I'm saying? I love just being out there with him. His energy is unmatched, and our energy together is unmatched, really. So it's just it's just, just a good feeling having him there. Like, just me knowing that he's making it as well, it just made me feel like I already made it. Like, no matter what happens, I already made it because he got the chance to do it, you know what I'm saying? So like I said, you come down to a group that really had Temple in the mix for you, St. John's, obviously Pitt there, Sam Hall. Rockers, like a lot of school that would have been staying pretty close to home. So walk us the process. Like, how did Pitt win you over over all those other schools? It wasn't even, for me, it wasn't even about staying close to home. It was more just the feel, the vibe. Like, I, I came on campus and right away, uh, Coach T.O. you know, from the airport, and he has to be the most vibrant coach in college basketball there is. And I just knew, like, oh, gosh, like, this is, this is where I want to end up. Like, I like his energy. And I met Cape and I met JC and the rest of the staff. And I was just like, I like the energy over here. Like, I, I believed in what they were trying to build there. You know what I'm saying? They had a couple down years. Uh, Cape had just taken over. And I, I felt like he, he knows what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? So I believed in him. And he helped me. They all, they all helped me become the player I, I am today. And I, I love Cape. And I love the staff. And forever grateful to them. What was that pitch to you? Because I hear a lot of guys, and obviously you didn't necessarily experience this aspect to an order Julian, but – a lot of coaches will tell you guys, okay, we're going to play you, we're going to start you, we're going to get this and that. But obviously a lot of coaches out there lie about that. So was that something that Coach Cable was telling you? Like, did he say, all right, we're going to have you be one of our go-to guys this freshman year? Or what was his pitch to you? No, no pitch. It was Justin. Word for word, Justin, if, if you come here, I'm not guaranteeing you no minutes. You got to work. That was his pitch. And I just said, okay, let's do it. And it sounded like a challenge to me, so I said, let's do it. I just knew, like, 
You know what I'm saying? That's probably the realest answer I've ever heard in my life from, from a coach, especially like I'm not gonna he said, I'm not gonna lie to you. You know what I'm saying? There's minutes on the table, it's up to you how many you take. And I said, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? I took the challenge and, and it worked out for the best. You know, Cape Cape really they really taught me how to just work. Like, you know what I'm saying? Forget the outside nonsense, don't listen to the media, don't listen to the hype. Work. And then listen, I bought in and and look, look where I'm at now. They helped me out a lot. Heading into that freshman year, did you expect to have the season you had? Be a guy that does everything that you're going to accomplish throughout that freshman season. Did you expect that? Did you expect to have a little bit of a lesser role? Like, what was your expectation before you ever played a college game? I really went in there with no expectations. I went in there with the mindset of, all right, well, whatever got to be done, Justin, go do it. Because, you know, a lot of guys don't want to rebound. A lot of guys don't want to be dirty and get do, do, do the dirty work, get on the floor, play defense, block shots, or potentially get dunked on or whatever. And I find it fun. I find it fun to do all that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the love of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, so just me really going in there and just having the mindset of whatever's got to be done, do. You know what I'm saying? And eventually it led to me playing more minutes, me getting more comfortable in my role, and then me ascending to one of the better players on the team, you know, and becoming a major part of the team. So I think that all that all played a part into how I played the following year and, and where what 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 stage I'm in now. I don't think people realize how difficult that is because you didn't do your freshman year, you did this past year averaging a double-double. And that's something I know some people are like, well, this, so many guys in the NBA do it. And it's, well, those are NBA guys that are in tip-top shape at that level, being paid millions of millions to do that. But what goes into that? Like, what gives you the energy to go out there and be a guy that scores nearly 20 points a game? So you have that aspect too. You're getting out there getting 10 plus rebounds a game. Like how do you, you're playing defense at an elite level. Like how have you learned to do all this on a court and in, the, in terms of a 40 minute game in college? It's not even about learning how to do it. It's just about going out there and really doing it. Like I, I always, like all my coaches, even like especially Coach Tio, uh, he, he always told me that you have the like the mentality and the and the drive to go do it. So like, why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't short don't shortchange yourself by not doing it every game. So he really taught me how to bring it. They taught me how to bring it every game. You know what I'm saying? And me learning that through my freshman year and my and going into my sophomore year, it just helped me just. Go out there, get every rebound, block shots, play defense, score the ball when you need to be scored, be a great teammate, and be the energy guy. You know what I'm saying? It's all about your mindset and your mentality of like whether you it's either it's either you want to do it or you don't. You know what I'm saying? You can't turn the light off and turn it on. There's no on and off switch. It's every day. So it's just a mentality, really. So would you say that that's something that pretty much anyone that can do? Like if you're at least obviously you have to have a division one type of body, but can anyone do that if you have the right mentality then? It's that it's harder than it's harder than it's harder than that. But like, if you got the mentality to do something, you can go do it. I, and I said that for anybody with anything, any sport, any aspect of life. If you got the mentality of y'all gonna get this done, you gonna get it done. You know what I'm saying? You might fall short a couple times. Like I know I didn't. Like my personal goal was to get double double every game of the year. I fell short a couple times, and some games I fell way short. Some games I fell like oh one two rebounds right there, but. You know what I'm saying? As long as you go out there and give your best effort, that's that's all you can ask for every day. You know what I'm saying? Win, lose, or draw, whatever you're know what saying. But it's just a matter of just going out there and just being confident and, and having the energy to go do it. That drive, you know, what I mean? go do it. Throughout that summer workouts and then training camp leading up to your freshman year, were you feeling confident and comfortable? Like, were you kind of having an established role where you're dominating or having a big, solid role throughout practice? Or did that all of a sudden come to you in the middle of the season when you started starting? Uh, that, that really came to me towards, it's crazy. Like when I first got on campus, mm -hmm. I, I felt it. Like I knew I was, I was going to be one of the better players on the team. I knew I could fit into one of these big roles on the team, but then I had torn my ACL partially. Like I messed up my leg and it kind of sent me back. So then when I came back, I was kind of like, you know what I'm saying? A little timid and stuff like that. I had to work my way back into it. But, uh, I want to say after the West Virginia game, that's when it clicked. I remember someone in the stand said free champ penny. That's, that's when it clicked for me. That's when I said, all right, this is, I'm going to turn this into my program. I'm going to turn this into, I'm saying, somewhere where I consider home, and I, I'm a big part of it. You know what I'm saying? And from that day on, I just worked every day, really. I'm not going to be able to list every single thing you did, but you finished up top five in pit freshman records for about 10 or 15 different stat categories. So what was that like, just going on night and night out? You're nearing close to close to different records as a freshman. I'm sure you obviously were kind of keeping track or hearing about some of that stuff. So what was going through your mind as you heard about that? Uh, just keep going, really. I kept telling myself, keep going. I was in the locker room uh, with Chase Smith. His dad, Charles Smith, played at Pitt. So he would always tell me, my dad says, uh, he dares you to go get his records. 
like he dares you to go get his records. So, I mean, it was kind of like a motivational factor for me, just being able to see, like, sit there and see his pops, just, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, it was fun. It's just all, it all comes down to just being fun and just having fun and, and doing what I love, and doing what I love, you know what I'm saying? That's it. One guy that you only got one year out there with is Trey. He also then transferred out to Nebraska and did his thing out there this year. But what was it like playing alongside him? I think Trey's dope. I think Trey's a great player. I think Trey has the intangibles to be a great NBA player. Very athletic. Shoot the ball, put the ball on the ground. Uh, it was dope. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I miss Trey. It's my sophomore year as well. But uh, I wish nothing but the best. I hope Trey, you know what I'm saying, pick it up this year and, and make it happen for himself. I think he can. Him and, him and his brother. There is one game we have to touch up on, though, from your freshman season. And they came out with the ACC awards, and you don't get the all-freshman team, which is something that obviously a lot of people said you probably should have deserved. And your response, I'm not sure if that really did impact it much or not, but you go out there on 31 points against Wake Forest in a conference tournament game, something that's not been done by anyone really before. So was that something that fueled you in that game, or what led to that huge outing for you? Definitely. Um, the night, It's crazy. The night before the awards came out, Coach called me to his room, and I, I was thinking, oh, maybe I got the award. Maybe I got it. And he was like, you didn't get it. They gave it to, I think, Cole Anthony, Landis Noli, Cassius Stanley, and uh, two other guys. I forgot the other two. But um, it kind of hurt, hurt my heart. Like, I really felt like I deserved it. You know what I'm saying? As a freshman leader, my team is scoring and rebounding, and I think field goal percentage as well. So... I, got, I felt disrespected. I took it way, 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 way more personally than I should have, than I thought I was going to take it. But all I knew was that next game when I, like, when they, uh, the, the, the ball went up in there, I just said, oh, it was go time. You know what I'm saying? Whoever's in front of me getting killed. So that arguably was my best game of the, like, my whole college career, just because, like, all the factors that went into it. I was going to ask you, Nesson, so was that probably your favorite college game of your career? That game and, um, and the Duke game this year, definitely. Mm -hmm. Those two games were definitely my favorite games. And so the confidence overall, like we saw a lot of different flashes from you. Overall, it's solid the course of the year, but that was one of the big flashes that really led into the sophomore season. So confidence-wise for you, like, how big was that 30-point game? You had a 30-point game at Georgia Tech earlier on, too. Like, how big were those type of games for you? Oh, they were huge. You know, I didn't really look at it as so much as scoring. I just looked at it as so much as I was feeling confident. You know what I'm saying? I was flowing into the game. I was letting the game come to me. I wasn't forcing it. And uh, my teammates were just happy for me. You know what I'm saying? Some of them were happy for me. And I just loved it, you know what I'm saying, being around those guys and, and them also pushing me. You know, I remember coming off the court and in the locker room, and it was just water was being thrown everywhere, you know what I'm saying, after we win those kind of games. So those are just moments I'll never forget, and I love them. We have to discuss your head coach, Coach Capel. He's someone that I know has got his name tossed around. A lot of people, different people might not be too happy with the record so far since he's been out there, but – I'm someone that's pretty high on him. I think he's got a great, great, right future out there still. But you got to experience him on the days playing on the off the court situation. You got to experience the whole package of him for the past two seasons. So, what's it been like just being coached by Coach Capel for two years? Capel is the best coach in college basketball, in my eyes. Mm -hmm. I'll keep it real. We, we might not have the best record, but I, I think Capel is, is arguably one of the best, like, if not the best coach in college basketball. I wouldn't want to play for anybody else. I got friends in all types of schools, and they tell me about their coaches, and I just don't see them comparing to Cape. Uh, he's honest. You know, he, he he loves his players. He loves us to death. He's like, you know what I'm saying, his family to me. You know what I'm saying? Everything, everything I need, he got me. And uh, it was great to play. I learned a lot of things from him. You know what I'm saying? To show up every day, be, every, be like, be an everyday guy. You know what I'm saying? He pushed me, spoke to me by myself a lot, just gave me, dropping little gems here and there on how I could be better and, and what I could work on. You know what I'm saying? And when I was, when I was messing up, he would be the first one to tell me, yo, Jess, like, you got to pick it up. You know what I'm saying? I, and I value that a lot. I'm saying someone who could be honest like that in any moment is someone you want to keep in your corner. So I love Cape, and I feel like he's he's a, he's a very, very large part of the reason why I'm here today. So many people might go out there and say, well, obviously they know he's a great person, and but it might not always correlate to a win aspect. But I think that's a huge thing, especially when we're talking about college coaches, that someone that a player can trust, someone that they can go to for things on and off the court, and it's like you said, you can just trust him. He's going to help you develop you. He's going to help be there for you. How important and critical was that for you in becoming who you are, just having a kind of that, in a way, a father figure throughout your college career? It was it was great, you know what I'm saying, having someone you could trust. It's like that's your family away from home, you know what I'm saying? So being able to trust him like, on that level with anything, you know what I'm saying, with any problems I had, I can go to Cape. And it was just great because, you know what I'm saying, that, that is this leads to us building trust off the court and 
really make me trust him more on the court. You know what I'm saying? It was just great to have that, you know what I'm saying, around me. And that's a bond I have for life, you know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate that bond. I love Kate. You look at your past two years out there. What's the favorite memory that comes to mind? Anything about him? One thing about Cape, uh, what game was it? I don't know. I don't even remember what game it was. It was one of these games he won. He uh, he came in the locker room and threw water at us. <laughs> favorite memory when it comes to Cape. He came in the locker room. I've never seen him more excited. I, it was a big game. We won a big game. And he came in the locker room. We just started throwing water everywhere. He was just so excited and happy to be there with us. And that's my favorite moment of Cape. I think it was Duke this year. Mm-hmm. I think. I'm not sure. But it, it was my favorite moment of Cape by far. We then know things get hectic for the entire world. Then the COVID pandemic comes in. And it affects, obviously, anyone that plays, really any aspect of life. But when you're a player, I know a lot of gyms were shut down. A lot of stuff was going on. So how did you approach the COVID pandemic? Did you get a court? Were you able to work out? Like, how did you approach the pandemic and the whole lockdown? Uh, the first three months when I was at home back in New York, I um, I used to take my mom's car, you know. She didn't want me to, but I did. I take her car. I used to go to the, uh, a park in Queens, like one of the only parks that was open. And me and a couple other guys that played overseas, we would do, like, like cardio, run. We had some weights, you know what I'm saying? And we would just work out on the field, basically, because, you know, the gym wasn't open. So – how to get it how you live, you know what I'm saying? So we did that for a while, those three months, and then we got back to school, and it was limited gym access, but I used to sneak in the gym. A <laughs> kid probably going to be mad when he sees this, but I used to sneak in the gym a lot and get get some shots up, you know, play a couple pickup games. But it was really all about just doing the little things you could do. Like, you didn't have much, but just work what you had. So I bought a couple 15-pound weights trying to make those work. So just really just getting, getting all over and getting in. As we know, you walk away in the first team all ACC selection. You have an incredible season. Someone that, if the records maybe were a little bit better, or you guys didn't get affected by COVID too much, you could have even been in the discussion for player of the year in the conference. So, did you expect this for this season? Like, did you think you're going to have this good of a year in your sophomore season? Definitely. I, I felt like I put in the work this off season, especially with my weight coach, with uh, Coach G. I felt like I, I put in a lot of work. Mm-hmm. especially with my conditioning, just, just being able to say, get my body stronger from all my knee injuries and all types of stuff like that. I expected this for myself. I expected myself to come out here and be the best version of me. And at the end of the day, it was all about me just coming out here and doing it. You know what I'm saying? They, they propelled me to that next level and it helped me out a lot. And COVID didn't go away during the course of the year. You guys had the pretty much close to daily testing throughout the season. You guys had mask mandates. You guys had all the stuff you guys had to deal with. So how did you get accustomed to that? Was that something that you ended up getting adjusted to? Did you never really completely adjust to that? Like, how did you handle all the stuff that came along with COVID? We're not complaining. That's, how, that's what I said to myself. Mm-hmm. Man, we're blessed to be out here and play. You know what I'm saying? A lot of teams, I believe, shut their whole thing down. Mm-hmm. We got a chance to play. I'm not going to complain. Whether we got we to gotta wear masks while we play, we got to wear masks while we play. Like, whatever it may be, I just want to work. You know what I'm saying? As the year got on, the restrictions got less and less and less, but just basically going in there saying we're not complaining. We're just going to work and play and have fun at the end of the day. For a lot of guys, they're going through the season. They might head into the yard on mock drafts. It might already be someone that everyone's well talking about that they're going to be drafted. Maybe probably just going to get done after college and leave after the year. You obviously developed over the course of the season, eventually moved yourself into the mock draft discussion. So how did you handle that? Like when you started stringing together all those big games, you started seeing your name pop up on mock drafts, people are saying, okay, this is a guy's a legit pro now. Did that change you at all? Did that make you work harder? Like, how did that impact you if you even did see the mock draft and stuff like that throughout the season? I saw it, but it never changed me. I just, if you, once you start feeding into the media, so, you know what I'm saying, you lose yourself just mm-hmm. little by little, you don't even realize it. So, I never, I, I seen it. I was happy about it. You know what I'm saying? My teammates saw it. They was always, like, joking with me about it and stuff like that. But it never got in between of what I had to do on the court and, and, and the work put on behind the scenes. So that's just the biggest thing for me is just that helped me was basically just throwing that to the side. Like, I see, I understand, I hear about it, but like just staying focused on what I got to focus on. That's something that's crazy about you is that you really developed the consistency this year. Like that was something that very few guys, or in fact, no one in the country averaged double double this year at a high major level. You had every single game 10 plus points. How were you able to develop that consistency this year? Just being a dog, you know what I'm saying? Just going out there and just playing to your strengths. Like I know I had to work on a lot of I worked on a lot. I've been working on a lot of shooting in my offseason. But uh playing to my strength, getting to the glass, shooting open shots, that mid-range area. People say it's out the game, but it's really not. You know what I'm saying? But uh 
just just knowing that you can't turn it off. You can't like it's no you can't turn have an on and off switch. That's the one thing my coaches really 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 tried to to embed in me. Like you can't have an on and off. It's always got to be on on the court off the court. You got to be ready to hoop whenever you step on. So. Two games I really want to touch up on. One was a back-to-back outing. You went 20 and 21 game, which is record enough. It's very rare anyone's able to do that. Then you do it the very next game. How did you do that? That was a dare. <laughs> that was a dare. I had 20, so I had 20, 20 against Northeastern, Northwestern, whatever the team. We won. And the first person that came up to me was Coach T.O. and said, oh, you're soft. You should have got 25 rebounds. And the next game, I went and got 24. He was a little bit more happy, but still, you know what I'm saying? He just always pushed me to go out there and be better and get more and get more and get more and never be satisfied. So it was, it was cool. I didn't think I, I, I personally didn't know I was going to do that that next game. I started off kind of slow, but once I had 10 10 at halftime, I just knew I was going to go for it. So it was dope. And that's the record type of thing. Like I said, not too many guys get that. So were you looking up at the scoreboard? Like, did you just know like, as you're creeping up more and more close to that 20, 20 range? Like, were you seeing and kind of aware where you were at? Definitely. I knew where I was at the whole game. I knew where I was at. I really, really, but what really, really special for me is when I came back from my injury after that to, for the Syracuse game. If I had a guy in the Syracuse game, it would have been really special for me. But uh, I was close. I was close. I was close. But yeah. Uh, it was just cool, just just to experience that, you know what I'm saying, the hype and just know what it takes to go out there and do it. It's really hard, so. Another big game is something you've already discussed a couple of times is against Duke. Obviously, Coach Capel's former program, and he was out there, and you ended up dropping 31 points that night. Take us to that game and just what that experience in that night was like. Cape had, we had a conversation with Cape, the and shoot around. He was like, it was do or die. Like, this is the game everybody wants. Everybody wants to be Duke. Everybody wants to be in this game. You know what I'm saying? And here we are. What are we going to do with our opportunity here? And he brought the huddle in. There was a lot of other factors that led to that, too, that game that I played, that conversation in the huddle. And uh, they, they were saying Matthew Hurt was better than me. So I kind of took it very personal. I think Matthew Hurt's a great player. Mm-hmm. I just took it personal. You know what I'm saying? I knew that I was going to go out there and, and give him my all, win, lose, or draw. So... Just when I got up there, I started hitting shots, making layups, catching dunks, and just hitting threes. I was just like, oh, it's going. It's going, it's going, it's going. So it was a really special night for me to do that. And by the end of that game, I was just – I was exhausted at the end of that game. But I was just so happy and relieved that we did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's everybody's dream, man. I got to accomplish it. You going in the ACC means that you're going up against multiple guys as NBA prospects. Like you said, Matthew Hurt just won the net, very many names you could list for this. But who was your favorite guy to battle in the past two years? The past two years, Jericho Helms, NC State. We bumped heads every time we play. We bump heads, but that's one kid I could say he's a dog. You know what I'm saying? He's all respect, all love. And I think he got a bright future as well, but I love battling against him. It's always a dog fight with him. And I can't wait to see where his career goes. So now when you're looking at what we talked about, you obviously had your name start pulling up on mock drafts. And as we know now, you have declared for the NBA draft, but – at what point did you start feeling like, okay, I really do want to look into this as something that I truly do want to pursue? And when did you ultimately come to the decision that, you know, I'm going to commit to the draft, I'm going to go out and who declare for the NBA draft? End of the year, I didn't really focus on all that in the beginning of the year. You know, I kind of had it in the back of my head, like, yo, I'm going to try and do it this year. I'm definitely going to declare and keep my eligibility and stuff like that. But then, like, I started working out uh, in California for a little while. I came back to school and I just told Cape, like, I got that feeling. Mm-hmm. I can make it happen. You know what I'm saying? I felt like, the real only way for me to get prepared for this draft, if I want to be a real NBA player, is, is by doing it, is by going through it, you know what I'm saying, fully committed to it and putting my time and effort into it. So I did that. Cape fully supported me. My coaches fully supported me. I speak to them almost like three times a week. You know, uh, they always say whenever I want to come back to school and work out, it's always there for me. So just just knowing that I have everybody's support, it gives me that much of a, of, of a boost of confidence. Last thing about Pippi for getting this whole NBA process now is you look at the future. I know they had a lot of stuff happen more towards the end of the year. A guy transferred out, but they now have pretty much what the roster is going to look like next year. And it's going to have a lot of guys you play with that are young. Obviously, you have a few different guys like William that came in that reclassed up that was super young last year. You have a couple different guys like Noah, John, loves to come back from his situation. So what's the future of Pip basketball look like? Let me go to Cali. I'll keep it simple. 
I think Femi is he shows so many so many signs of his greatness at the end of the year. You know what I'm saying? When he really got a chance to go out there and, and put it all on the floor. And I feel like with with the discipline and focus that that, that Coach Cape will give him and, and show him how to how to how to use in the game, I feel like he'll be a pro. He has the game. I've known him for years since I was young. And I feel like he's got a chance to 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 be the next one as a sophomore or a junior, whatever it may be for him. But he he's definitely Definitely going to be a bright spot. I feel like uh, Nike's going to show some bright spots as well. He showed it over the year. I feel like he's going to pick it up a, a lot this year. Mm-hmm. And, and Will and Noah, those are my two youngins, especially Will. That's my young boy. He just turned 18. Uh, he's going to be great. He's going to be great. Noah's going to be great. Everybody's, I think that whole, I think they got a, a bunch of dogs in that gym right there. I don't know the new guys that much. I've heard of Dan, uh, Judge, and Marius Burton. Uh, I heard they're going to be good. I heard they some dogs and they want to work. So they got that, that older experience as well. And uh, I believe in them. I believe in them 1,000%. Uh, uh, I feel like they're the underdogs with ACC right now. And I feel like they're going to make a lot of stuff happen and surprise a lot of people. Well, let's get into this whole process. Once again, we started off saying this is the dream that you've always had, wanting to play in the NBA. So it's a simple question then. What will you bring to an NBA team? Whoever decides to invest a pick in you or however they end up landing you, what will you bring to an NBA team? I'm going to be that dog on like, I like to watch a lot of Jay Crowder. He's a dog. So I feel like I could be that kind of player, a do it all kind of player. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's you need me to rebound and run the floor, I rebound and run the floor. You need me to shoot open threes, make open threes, I'll make open threes. You need me to lock down and play defense, I can lock down and play defense. Y'all need me to be that and just got to come in the game and just bring a lot of energy, I can do it. I, I just, for any NBA team, I feel like I'll bring that oomph. That, that energy to the locker room, the energy to the team, and that ump to play and want to win. That's what I love about your game because I know there's a lot of guys that always have the dream of saying, yeah, I want to be KD, I want to be LeBron, I want to be Steph. Like, that's obviously great. And, and you, someone's obviously going to fill that role eventually. But you have that mentality saying, you know, I want to be that guy that's going to be a dog. A guy, Jay Crowder, that's lasted now, I think, 10 years or so. He's going to last many, many more years. So what kind of gave you that kind of perception to go out there and say, you know what, I want to be like this type of guy? I don't I – don't, I don't like to watch. I don't want to be nobody else. I want to be me. You know what I'm saying? I just, I want to go out there and play against LeBron. I want to go out there and match up against KD. And I want to be in a position to have to sit down and guard them and, and go at them. You know what I'm saying? I live my life waiting for these moments. So just just being able to know that I could bring that dog mentality. And yeah, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be a cakewalk. Of course not. But I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm ready to go out there and, and take on that challenge and, 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 and put my best foot forward. So just just me knowing my strengths and knowing what I do best, whether it's be the role guy, whether it's be be the energy guy, be be the scorer, be whatever they need me to be. I just know I could do it. I know my game consists of whatever they need me to do. We know that you obviously haven't played or in people's perception. You haven't been able to play it publicly now for quite a few months. The season ended. How much better have you gotten? What else have you added to your game? And how much better are you at this point heading to the combine? I'm not going to speak too much on that, but. <laughs> I got I got some different stuff to my game now. I'll just leave it at that. I, I've been working. I've been working a lot. I've been in that lab. You head into this combine soon. What do you want to go out there and prove? Like you got a couple more days to so head out to the G League one, then you head to Chicago for the main one. So what is your thing you want to prove to NBA GMs, NBA coaches, even other players? Like what do you want your statement to be? He's he's better than what we see. He's better than what we saw in college. He's he's elevated his game in a, in this short period of time, mm-hmm. and he's ready. That's what I want them to see, and that he's not going to give up on nothing. Now, when that time does come and you hear your name possibly get selected, what's going to go through your mind and what's going to be your reaction? I'm going to hug my mom, my dad, and my brothers. It's the first people I'm going to hug because they, they, they've they been there through it all. They, they've believed in me. they sacrificed so much, money-wise, everything. My mom got a minivan when I was young so she could drive us to all these games with our teammates. They sacrificed a lot, and and and... I'll probably shed a tear towards them. You know what I'm saying? Just know how much they, they put they put out for me. So it all goes towards my family for me, really. When you do talk about the NBA and you possibly get a matchup against all the players out there, is there one guy specifically that you're most excited to go match up against? LeBron James. He, he'll probably kill me the first couple of times I see him, but I'll get the hang of it eventually. And I'm not afraid to go up against the best players. I'm not afraid to go out there and get dunked on or get my, you know what I'm saying? Just, just, just like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not afraid of nobody. I'm not afraid. So 
I just can't wait to go out there and, 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 and get up with them and get up against these guys and just see them. Eventually the time will come. We're going to be going through the training camp and you're going to be out there as the youngest guy out there. How do you start yourself? Like, what's your plan? You've done it now in college and you clearly did it fine, like we talked about earlier. But what, what's it take for you to go into the locker room and try earning minutes or try earning that spot? What does it take for you and how do you plan to go in there? Being confident in my game. I'm, there's going to be guys who try and test you, tell you, oh, you're not that good. And I'm going to talk my my stuff. I'm going to be like, yo, I, I'm here for a reason, just like you're here for a reason. So you're going to have to show me. Like, I, I, I've seen a lot of players, all these players in the NBA, I think they're great players, great players. But at the end of the day, once we're on that court, you're going to have to show me why you why you deserve to play over me, why you deserve to you know saying, take food off my plate, you know what I'm saying, or, or else I'm going to come take it off yours. If you look at everyone else that's going to be in this draft process, is there someone else that you think is a sleeper or someone else that you think is going to also move their way up? I think my brother's going to move his way up, way up, way, way up. I feel like they people under, like, doubt him a lot, but he's going to move his way up a lot. And uh, Josh Primo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's – yeah, I think, yeah, he's going to push his way up a lot, a lot more than people expect him to. And he's very, very young. So mm -hmm. those are my guys. Oh, and my guy, Eugene. Everybody, Marcus Carr, everybody I'm working out with, they're going to push their way up because we've been in that lab work. So stay tuned for that. I'm glad you said Josh because he is someone super high on. He also did the whole reclassing like William did. And I think he's spectacular. I think he's obviously young, so it might take a couple more years to develop. But how special is Josh Primo? Special kid. Very special kid. You don't, nobody knows it until you're really up with him. Like he's special. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I see him being a great player. And obviously, you're going to take whatever situation you get into, but. Let's say something does end up landing you and your brother together on the same NBA team. How special would that be? And just what would an NBA team be getting in two champagnes going together? It'll be a dream come true. That's the first thing. Second thing, they got they get now they game instead of one, they get two dogs. <laughs> two guys who about to go out there and kill. Especially if we're on the court together, we feed off each other. So nobody that, that energy is gonna be unmatched. Like nobody can get between that energy right there. And even if they try to, they're gonna get married. It's over. So that, that'll that be really special. And I just know that they're going to get two kids who ready to work off the, off day one. Absolutely, man. Well, a couple more things before I let you go, one of which is I was like rapping discussing a legacy because I know that's something that all guys want to achieve for themselves. So when that day does come and you step away from this game someday, what do you want to remember it for, for what you achieve both on and off the court? I want to be known as being one of the better players to play this game. Obviously, of course, as everybody's goal, that's my main goal. Mm -hmm. And just being a great person, like everybody, you know, I want everybody to be like, yo, he he treated the janitor with the same respect as the CEO. I want to be known as that guy who who had respect for everybody, who loved everybody the same way, and, and was never no bad blood. You know what I'm saying? I'm not one to hold grudges. I want everybody to succeed. So that's that's what I want to be remembered for, and one that helped his community. You have something on your Twitter background, and that's expect nothing and appreciate everything. What does that mean to you? I got a tattoo on my body. Mm -hmm. That that means everything to me. I I've, I've learned to expect nothing from nobody. Ex expect nobody to give me no handouts, no nothing, and just you know what I'm saying. Go out there and work for everything. Just go out there and make sure that you deserve it. Like before you get it, that's really it. So if you get that nice check, are you just saying you have all these aspirations you want to do? What's the first thing you're going to buy either for family? You want to go for community service? Like what's the first thing you want to use that money for? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is save my money. Mm -hmm. I'm going to save it. I'm going to put it away in the bank, put it into smart investments. And uh, I just want to, I actually want to buy a laundromat, but that's besides the point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to invest my money. But if it had to like go to my family, making sure they in a nice home. They, they move out the house, the, the, the house they're in now and put them in, in something very nice for them because they deserve it. Absolutely. And then my final thing for you, Give me your three biggest goals in one year from now. If we were talking one year after most likely would be your rookie season, what, would, what do you want to accomplish the next year? I want to accomplish being one of the better role players in the NBA because I know the first couple of years is going to be knowing your role, being one of the better role players, upgrading my shooting, and uh, helping my team win, basically, helping them become championship kind of caliber teams, whether or not they are or they aren't, just upgrading them from what they already are. Those are my goals right there. Absolutely, man. Well, congratulations on everything, man. I'm excited to see what God got next for you. And best of luck on everything else going on from here on out, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys. Of course, man. Y'all welcome on, man. God bless. Yes, sir. Same.